Y'all, this is five games under five bucks. My name is Gamer Herb. For a long time, I did an indie showcase thing called Five Games Under Five Bucks with Three Bears Gaming. And that's where I take five extremely cheap games and showcase them on stream. Uh, share them with y'all, give my opinions and impressions, and they're all like super cheap. There's crazy deals going on right now all the time. And I love indie games and they don't get enough love or enough marketing or enough attention. So tonight we played Cosmic Top Secret, Donut Dodo, Golf Peaks, Rogue Aces, and Stick It to the Man. And all five of those games are under $11. So for 10 bucks and change, you can play five awesome games. They're all very different. Um, but to be honest, I like all of these. I would recommend all of these games. Um, it depends on the kind of gamer that you are, but what we're gonna do is play the trailers of these games and I'm gonna talk a little bit about it while that happens. So let me go get this trailer. Um, Cosmic Top Secret is the first game. I think Cosmic Top Secret is a brilliance, uh, a brilliant exploration and homage to the Cold War. Um, it's about this Danish woman who basically, like, this Danish woman who is asking and interviewing her father, who was a spy in the Cold War, and it's called Cosmic Top Secret because it's like one of those games, it's one of those games that's sort of like a point and click game, but like, I don't know, there's a lot more going on here. Uh, Cosmic Top Secret is, is like this real life term that I guess uh, the military uses or militaries in different countries use, use to describe something that's like a level of top secret that is so classified, it's so secret that like, it's, it's like the security clearance is like, you know, the ceiling, you know? Um, and there may be something involved with something paranormal or extraterrestrial. I'm not exactly sure yet. But it's all about the Cold War and the experiences of uh, this woman's father and sort of her piecing it together in this insane, like, mixture of point-and-click gaming and also sometimes 3D running around, jumping around, collecting stuff gaming. Um, it's a very interesting game. All of the documents in it are real. Uh, most of it is voice acted, and it's a combination of Danish and English um, they talk a lot about social justice and about what was going on during the Cold War at the time. Um, and just like, it, it's a playable event at the Cold War Museum in Denmark. Um, really, really interesting game. I had a good time with it. I only played for about an hour and a half, but honestly, I would definitely play more of this game. Um, it's, it's, uh, the art style is incredible. The uh, sounds and music were extremely appropriate. There's all these little details that remind me of the movie uh, The Science of Sleep or anything by Michel Gondry, um, where everything is like a pop-up or a, a pop, you know, a sort of like a, a, a cloud that's made out of like tissue paper or like cardboard. Everything is like a two-dimensional photo that looks like a three-dimensional image until you get up close to it. Um, it's really, really, bizarre and weird and I like it it's very interesting um, I would definitely play more of that and try to finish it um, I don't know how long this game is but uh, how long to beat is a great resource website for that um, let me know uh, let me know if we're doing all right here if if, if y'all can see if y'all can hear if everything's going all right let me let me know <laughs> all right our second game of the night uh, actually yeah let me put these games down here Right, this game is $1.99. Uh, I think it's worth that. If you've ever been interested in any sort of wartime stuff, if you've ever been interested in, you know, uh, the stories of our parents, the stories of our past, the stories that you may hear certain things from the news or the media or, you know, government officials, but having someone ask a family member about what they went through being a part of that, I think is really important. And there's not a lot of games that really fully like explore that that idea. So I think this is a really cool game for that. Um, our second game of the night is called Donut Dodo. It is $2.49. It is the most expensive game on this list for $2.49, y'all. 
Um, this game does not have a trailer, unfortunately, for some reason. It just doesn't play on the Nintendo eShop. I've run into games like that before, and that's a shame because a lot of people are going to look at this game and think that it's a, just a Donkey Kong clone. Um, and I would say that while it does have things in common with Donkey Kong and Bubble Bobble and Burger Time and Balloon Fight, it has like all these 80s arcade tropes in it. But I, I, I'm telling you, if this game were to come out in the 80s, this game would have been a million seller game. This would have, this game would be up there with Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. This would be something that people would, would still be talking about today. And there would be new versions about it today. Um, you know, new versions of it today, I should say. Um, I think it's really awesome. Uh, it's a game where you collect donuts, but the trick to getting more lives is to making sure you're collecting the the bonus combo donut over and over and those appear completely randomly so every time you play the path in which you need to take to to get the most points and you know secure your victory is different even though you're you know it's single screen puzzles but it's an it's amazing the amount of times that i not only passed the first level but even more amazing how many times i lost the first level even after already passing it multiple times and that's because it's a little bit different every time um the way the enemies work, the feel of it, the physics of it, it's like, this is a fantastic game. If you like old arcade games, you need to play Donut Dodo. It's a great game. Also, the music is fucking killer chiptune. Killer chiptune, okay? Like, I'm not even joking. This is a great game. Um, I was really impressed with this. It's 249. I mean, like, how many quarters is that, right? We used to spend way, way more money in quarters, pure quarters, just playing fighting games and other shit we used to love back in the day in the arcade. So um, I'm impressed by this game. I think it's awesome. I think I'm definitely going to play it. Uh, it is tough, but it is rewarding and addicting, and you just want one more. You just want to keep going one more. No, I got this. I got this. I promise. I can do it one more time, you know? So that's Donut Dodo. Uh, we also played Golf Peaks. Golf Peaks is a game that, I mean, it is about golf, I guess. But it is definitely like a make, you, you have like so many decisions you can make. You have cards and you have to get the ball, you know, in the hole in those. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you, Shandy. Thank you for the sub. 11 months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm right now in the middle of recording a thing for five games under five bucks. So join me, join us. So Golf Peaks is a game where it's like, definitely more puzzle than golf like i think any amounts of i think any amounts of you know lore or sort of skin on top of this game could apply to this it doesn't necessarily have to be golf but the fact that they make it golf i think makes it kind of neat because who doesn't love mini golf and the amount of variables and stuff that they're asking you to do in, in this game and figure out are just really interesting um i i definitely sat on several puzzles for like 20 minutes trying to figure them out this would be a good game that's mobile i think it is on mobile it would be a good game to play on the toilet it would be a good game to play in a waiting room or when you have a little bit a moment or, or two on public transit something like that um i think i don't think it's like mind-blowing i don't think it's like one of the best puzzle games i've ever played necessarily but i do think it's interesting and it's really well made and it's really solid and the sense of accomplishment and what they're asking you to do feels good when you figure it out. And I think that's kind of the measure of a good puzzle game is like, does it feel good to figure out the puzzle or is it just tedious? Is it just like whatever, you know? Um, so I like Golf Peaks. I think it's interesting. Um, this is something that I would pull out on the Switch when I only have, let's say, 10 to 20 minutes. Maybe I'm waiting for someone somewhere. Or maybe I'm taking a short ride on the train somewhere. Like, yeah, I could probably do a puzzle or two for this. Um, it's calm. It's peaceful. And to be honest, the only part I didn't really like about it is the kind of generic sort of puzzle game music that you hear a lot in a lot of games that are just supposed to be like zen or whatever. So I actually turned the music off and I played my own, which we're listening to right now, the Gran Turismo soundtrack. And I think that fit a lot better, honestly. All right, uh, the next game we played tonight was Rogue Aces. Rogue Aces is amazing. Rogue Aces, Aces is a roguelike airplane side-scrolling horizontal shoot-em-up game. 
where you have different missions that constantly replenish and then you're unlocking all these new game modes. There's one where you're like taking over this whole map. There's one where you're just endlessly playing and for as long as you can survive. And then there's one where you're just endlessly taking on random missions. Um, the most important thing that I think about a game like this is that it needs to feel right because the physics of an airplane and having to land and having to measure your throttle, like like worry about that while you're flying, really adds to the sort of realism of this. Even though it's simple to an extent and at first glance it looks kind of like flash game art, I would definitely not underestimate this game. Um, it runs at a great frame rate. It's super exciting. There's all these different events that happen. Um, you can capture bases and then move your base further into the game by capturing bases and then therefore having a place to land and heal and replenish all your weapons. Uh, the dialogue really has a ton of different, like just a ton of different possibilities. Like it's, it's one of those games where they, I haven't heard them say the same thing many times. They have a ton of different things that they could say. Um, and I mean, I think more than anything, this is just the kind of game that you can immediately pick up and have fun and probably die really quickly and immediately want to keep going. Like, um, similar to Donut Dodo, like, you don't want to stop playing. I didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep going. I want to keep unlocking stuff. I want to keep seeing how far I can go and what I can get. Um, I think this is a really solid game. This is definitely one of those games where when people tell me I love roguelike games, if people like Hades even, or, you know, uh, Immortal Redneck, or A Robot Named Fight, or Binding of Isaac, or any roguelike game you can think of, I think this belongs up there with those games. Um, there's really not another airplane game like this. The closest thing I can think of would be back in the day on the Genesis, there was a game called Target Earth. We haven't seen a game like that in a really long time. I think it's awesome. Rogue Aces is 10 out of 10 for me. Um, yeah, especially if you miss kind of like old simple games from the 16-bit days. This is just an awesome game. Lots of explosions, lots of things to do, lots of things to unlock. Thank you so much for that sub, Thick Bear. I appreciate you too. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so our last game of the night, uh, what we just played is called Stick It to the Man. This game, this game, uh, this reminds me, no joke, not only in the way that it looks and some of the ways that it plays, but the subject matter uh, is very similar to Psychonauts, just like in 2D. So gorgeous art, um, amazing dialogue, so much spoken dialogue. You don't have to read anything. Everything is spoken to you by different people. It's got this platforming aspect to it that a lot of like sort of story, puzzle, maybe point and click-ish games like this don't have, um, which is so funny because earlier, you know, uh, I was talking about Cosmic Top Secret, which also has a level of platforming. But yeah, I would say this is like, you know, if I had to define it somewhere, the 2D Psychonauts, I think, would be a good way to go about it because you're literally reading people's minds and then fixing their problems by figuring out their mental issues and what they need. Um, that may be weird or triggering or not necessarily what other people want to play. You know, I, 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 I can understand how this wouldn't be for any, for everyone necessarily in terms of the gameplay or maybe even the subject matter. Um, there may be parts of this that put, could potentially get offensive, although I didn't necessarily perceive it, but this game is about people and the perception of people. And based on who ma is making this game, that could mean that there are things that are only from a certain perspective that don't necessarily represent those people correctly. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with this game, but I do see it as the potential to be something that maybe would, maybe wouldn't be a fun time for people in the way that they make mental health kind of jokey. Um, however, as a person who has suffered from various mental health things, I do think this game is hilarious, and I do think it's a good way of handling those topics in a way that is genuinely funny um, and you can tell these people don't like hate anyone it's it's really a, a human game about the human condition and what we're all going through and our feelings about death our feelings about desire our feelings about how we feel about ourselves our self-image our self-esteem 
Um, this is the same company that made the game Flipping Death, which has the same exact art style and it is instead about helping people uh, uh, via the afterlife, um, bringing them back from the dead and, and solving their problems as ghosts and all, all that stuff. So, you know, for whatever reason, this game company loves to mess around with that topic of like, what would you do to, you know, what would you do to help people? How would you help them if you could read their minds? How would you help them if you could get into their souls and figure out what's going on with them? Uh, and I really, I really like that subject matter. I think it's a really awesome thing to do. Um, Flipping Death is about a four and a half to five hour game, maybe six hours. It's not going to last you forever. But again, all of these games are $2, except for Donut Dodo, which, oh my God, it was $2.49. So like... For the price of a uh, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, <laughs> like you could just have a whole video game that a ton of people have worked on. In 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 this game, we even found a secret area where they have like little cutouts of all of the staff and all the crew that make this game, and I just think that's awesome. I love when games do that. Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal did that. Um, many other games in the past have done that. That's the one that comes to mind always, but. Um, there's a lot of love going on in this game, a lot of great music, a lot of good dialogue. If you like Psychonauts, if you like Gr Grim Fandango, if you like any sort of point-and-click adventure that has a little, you know, sort of, um, sort of a, uh, a, a very, uh, like, satirical and snide but hilarious view of the world and what the human condition, I think Stick It to the Man is really awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, this has been five games under five bucks. Uh, I really like playing indie games. There's so many incredible games out there. Um, we didn't. We're not going to play it tonight, but p please play Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Um, <laughs> these five games, honestly, I would recommend all of these. I think they're all for different gamers and they're all for different moods. Uh, Cosmic Top Secret, I would say, is weird and interesting and curious and very avant-garde. Donut Dodo is perfect 80s arcade game, perfect. If you liked any arcade game from the 80s, you need to play this game because it is up there with those as well. Um, golf Peaks is a great little puzzle game that even if you're not in the golf on any level, it's just kind of like a which thing do I do first sort of game. And the way that they accomplish that I think is really clever, better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, Rogue Aces is just, an amazing addictive little roguelike airplane game um where you shoot and fly and do stuff and it's always different i love it and of course once again stick it to the man is a narrative story with gorgeous art and a ton of dialogue um i would recommend it like spend a saturday night with this game you probably laugh your ass off you know what i mean um i would definitely recommend playing this in front of other people or with other people as well it's a one player game but what you discover in it, I think would be great for anybody's stream or just having an audience in your living room of people to laugh with over this game. So, um, as always, hello, Calavera Candy, welcome in. You, Calavera, you need to play Donut Dodo. You need to play it, because you love games like that. I promise, I promise you'd love it. Um, so once again, uh, right here, I'm going to read this out. This is my own chat command. Long ago, legend tells of a long-running indie gaming showcase stream called Five Games Under Five Bucks, where Herb played and reviewed over 350-plus games. Check them out over at this link, please, and stay tuned for upcoming streams with full playthroughs of these games. Uh, I am going to start going back through these games. Um, maybe not on Saturdays, but I will start soon having um, uh, streams where I actually go and finish the games that I like. Uh, there's a ton of games reviewed in there. Please go check it out. Um, there's a lot of great games out there to play that I feel like nobody talks about. All of the games in there are on Switch unless listed otherwise. The reason I choose Switch is because most people have one because the eShop has insane deals and because when you buy all these games on Switch, you also get it portably. Um, I think it just makes the most sense. PlayStation and Xbox do have decent deals at times, but the real pull with Xbox's Game Pass and the real pull with PlayStation is this convoluted, you know, subscription structure that they've created for us recently. <laughs> um, I have PS Extra, but I don't think I'm going to renew it next year. I think I'm going to just use it for the rest of till like next June or whatever. Um, but yeah, the eShop has insane deals. I would recommend anybody just taking a look around. The, the way that I find these games is a website called Deku Deals, which is at that link too. Um, I would definitely check out Deku Deals if you like cheap games. 
Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I've played like, uh, well, we just had to end stream and then start again so that I could record this VOD, but I think it's going to be, it's going to work out well. Um, my, my Digimon, my Digimon is calling. My Digimon is calling. Oh, oh, he's, he's ready. He's ready to go to bed and he's ready to, he's ready to poo. <laughs> All right. Y'all, um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you for checking out these indie games with me. I have gone for about seven hours. Uh, I'm ready to chill. I'm ready to go eat and stuff. Uh, I really like all these games. None of these are bad. So right after this, I'm going to write a short review at that link. Uh, right here one more time at that link. I will have short reviews of all these games. And this will be a VOD on Twitch. And it will be a VOD on YouTube on my channel, which is Gamer Herb. Uh, please go check all that out. So much love to everybody. I am going to go pick someone to raid. You can find all my links and socials and YouTube and everything there at that site. I have a SoundCloud. I'm like working on an album. I have art that's on the way for new zines that are coming out. I'm collabing with some people right now. I'm going to be on a few podcasts coming up soon. And I have so much more at that link already. Um, I appreciate everybody for just being supportive and cool. Five games under five bucks is one of my favorite streams to do because we get to like try out all these cool fucking games you know and i may not ever finish all these games but i am going to definitely play lots of them offline and online and try to enjoy myself the best i can that's what gaming's about um it doesn't take 60 or 70 dollars to make an enjoyable game there's so many incredible games that are like under 20 bucks and then get discounted to under five bucks and that then they end up here on five games under five bucks so um i am going to do this stream again we're going to try to do it every month maybe uh i'm, I'm going to schedule uh, the schedule on the channel page is current and that's what i'm keeping up with everything and then you know i'll talk about it on social media but i'm thinking if i do five games under five bucks once a month and then in between that have indie game streams where i go through and actually beat these games and finish them i think that'll work out really well so um yeah stay tuned for the next five games under five bucks um let me find someone to raid real real quick i hope you all will join me there's a lot of great streamers out there and we definitely want to support our friends and folks out there there's so many people playing so many awesome things um and you know honestly so many just like also supportive people who have gone out of their way to like make sure that people know that I'm streaming and that I do cool stuff. And that really makes me feel like just great. You know, like it's just wonderful to know that, you know, your streamer friends also want people to get into like what you're doing too. And we pass the love around a lot, you know? Um, so uh, let me see here really quick. Let me, let me, let me make sure we're like, good, good. I'm gonna find us someone someone to raid. And then also, uh, the, the Discord link is invalid. Okay, I will fix that. I will fix that. Um, in fact, let me give you the real one right here. Sorry to hear that. I don't update the Discord as much as I should, but I try to be good at it. It's the same uh, Three Bears Gaming Discord that we've had for years. So I was like, I don't wanna like delete any of this stuff. I don't wanna get rid of any of this stuff. We should probably just, you know, keep it going because why wouldn't we keep it going um so uh let me see here really quick the invite link is this one you do have to be screened at first uh for our discord but when you come in there i will approve you if i know who you are and just do a simple introduction and then we're good that's the right discord uh, so i'll make sure that gets posted later um or I'll, I'll make sure that command gets fixed is what i mean to say um, OK, 